Hey guys, Shane here, welcome to part 2 of the D-Day special on my channel. So in this video, after we've detailed our commando, now we're going to paint him up. So first things first, I'm going to mask off his face using a bit of poster tack. I've already pre-painted this face and a link onto how I paint faces and flesh in the description of this video. I'm just going to use a little piece of balsa wood here just to ensure that I get a good, good seal here. As we're going to be doing a little bit of work with our airbrush. And speaking of that, we're going to take some Flejo model color Russian uniform. And we're going to tin it down with some flow improver. Uh, roughly, I mix this about maybe 50-50 or 60-40 uh, thinner to paint. And once you get the ratio, it does spray quite nicely. And we're going to use this to spray his uh, helmet. I just found it a little bit handier to use the airbrush here rather than a paintbrush, just because of the camo netting and hessian tape. Um, it might be a little bit tricky to get a paintbrush into that without destroying it, but if you do keep your paint thin with a brush, you can do it. And also, since we have this colour, I'm also going to spray up his bicycle. And again, we're going to hit this with the Russian uniform. We're not going to really see this bike much in this video. Uh, I'm just going to paint most of this off camera, just using uh, flat black for the tyres and saddle. And we're going to be focusing mostly on the commando himself. So we're going to start work on his assault jerkin or assault vest. And we're going to take some Vallejo flat brown, or should I say flat earth, and some English uniform. I'm going to put just a little one or two drops of English uniform into my flat earth mix to get this kind of dark khaki or canvas color. And I'm going to uh, tin this down with a drop or two of water and then start applying it with a paintbrush. In this case, I'm using a number four round Windsor Newton cotton. However, I will have to switch down to some smaller brushes as we get into the more finer details of this figure. I'm going to switch down to a number two brush here and let's pick out some of the more hard to reach details. I don't want any of the white primer showing through or should I say any of the light grey primer showing through. So I'm just going to take my time with a small brush and just ensure I have a good solid base coat. I'm just going to do his gaiters, and for this I'm going to use model color German uniform. You could do a khaki color for this too, however they did often uh, dye their canvas um, battle equipment like a green color. I can't remember the type of um, polish or uh, dye they used, but they... I 
I'm also going to use this color since I have it on my wet palette for the blanket of his um, on his assault jerkin. Again, you can use any real kind of drab color you want it. I want this green not to be the same color as his helmet. I don't want them to blend in together. So I'm going for a slightly lighter green. And since we're working on the on his uh, gaiters, I'm just going to take some German grey and uh, base coat his boots. Again, just doing some careful brushwork here just to keep it in the lines. Also just going to take a little bit of that German uniform colour, again from Vallejo model colour, and paint in the scabbard for his assault uh, or combat saw. I believe that's what type of weapon that is or um, a tool that is. So with all this allowed to dry, we're going to start allow, uh, adding our wash layers and for this we're going to use Citadel's Agra's Earthshade and I'm going to apply this all over the entire model. Again, I'm going to be careful not to allow this to pool in any areas, I don't want to do that. So you'll see me go back and blend it with my brush if I feel there's just too much of it building up. So we're washed it out to dry, we're going to start adding our highlights and we're going to start with the, his uniform or his battle dress and we're just going to go straight back to our English uniform and begin to paint this all over the model, leaving the washed areas in the recesses. So by using washes we allow our base coat to become our dark or undertone and then the actual normal colour when we apply back on top of it again becomes the medium tone. And you can see how quickly the, it changes the view of our model here. And again, I'm just leaving the, the wash in the, these recessed areas. I'm focusing on any flat areas of material, uh, tops of creases, and any area where it's a smooth surface where no shadows could be cast. And again, I'm keeping my paint nice and thin. There's a drop or two of water mixed into my paint on my wet palette just to ensure I get a nice uh, flow. If your paint is a little bit transparent, this is actually good, again, because it just allows general or should I say very gradual and subtle uh, transitions of highlight which is what, exactly what we want for this. Okay now we're going to add our highlight to his battle dress uniform and for this we're going to take our English uniform and then take some German camo beige and for this I'm just going to put a tiny amount of camo beige into our colour and this is going to be our first highlight. With this I'm going to be a little bit more disciplined to where I place this colour. I'm going to really focus on areas I feel are going to catch a lot of light tops of creases and any areas where the material is pulled tight against the body or taut against the body as very little shadow would fall on those areas. But I never want to completely remove the pre-existing colour, uh, it just helps create a very visually interesting model and especially for such a monotoned uniform as these British commandos have. Okay, then we're going to start adding some highlights to the salt jerkin and for this we're going to take our flat earth and then add it once again a little bit more German camo beige into the mix. You don't have, you don't have to add too much. Um, I find 3 is to 1 of the darker colour to lighter colour ratio works very well. It gives you a very subtle highlight without completely losing the hue of the, uh, the darker colour. And in this I'm being a little bit more disciplined. I don't want to completely highlight this up too much 
as the originals that I've seen in collections are much of a much darker material. So I'm just going to focus it on the top two creases. Now I'm going to take some Vallejo Panzer Race stack uniform. This is a lovely sandy color, and I'm going to start painting in the canvas tie downs and toggles on the salt jerkin. Again, I'm using a zero zero rigor brush here. It has a lovely long bristles on it. It allows me to get into these tighter details. And again, I've just tinned it down with a little bit of water. And you can see this lighter color just allows the details to pop. It really does a good job framing and drawing the eye into the various details of the salt jerkin. Now we're going to add the details to his commando flash and insignias. And for this, we're just going to use flat black. I'm going to paint in these details that we scratch built in the preceding video. Again, sorry, that's our focus. We're just painting in his shoulder tab. And then for basic highlights, I'm just going to take some German grey and just tap that into the center of the the rundle, if you will, or the uh, insignia patch. And then again, a little bit onto his shoulder tabs. Now we're going to try our hand at uh, doing the insignia. Uh, the commando insignia is basically an anchor with a Thompson submachine gun um, at the top of it, going across um, horizontal or vertically. I'm not the world's best freehander, so I'm just going to make a very basic approximation. I'm just going to do one vertical line, and then on, and then on each end of that vertical line, I'm going to do two horizontal lines to give the impression of the commando flash. Uh, there's no decals um, in 35th scale available online, I've looked. So I'm just going to use some Fist in Red from Citadel, uh, which is this lovely red colour. I try to use it as much as I can. And I'm just going to take a very fine brush. I believe this, like, once again, is either a zero or zero zero brush. And just uh, tin down my paint and try to scribe this detail in. Okay, we're going to take some of our Panzer Aces back uniform and we're going to do a dry brush. So I've just taken Removed about 90% of the paint on a piece of towel, a piece of paper cloth, and I'm just going to uh, dry brush this colour onto the, the helmet. And I just want to catch the camo netting and draw that detail out. And now I'm going to start doing the Hessian tape. And for this, I'm just going to take German uniform, DAC uniform, flat earth, and Russian uniform. And I'm just going to make mixtures of these different colours for each of the, the um, for each of the Hessian tape strips. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. You can just make combinations of these colors if you wish. Um, just kind of make sure that they kind of um, they work well together, that they're not too stark or too um, oppressive to the eye, if you will. I was going to add, uh, since I have a little bit more German uniform on my wet palette, I'm just going to take that and do a very basic highlight over the washed blanket that we've done. Again, I'm not going to take this any higher than this. It, uh, it's enough uh, highlighting in this to draw attention to it without it being overpowering. So now we're going to start basing his Bren gun, and for this we're going to use Model Air Metallic Black. I find this is a really good colour for basing weapons, as often gunmetal colours or gunmetal grey colours are just too bright. Now you can either use Metallic Black like this, or um, mix black into your uh, gunmetal colour or darken it down. You could also do this non-metallically by using dark greys, but uh, I haven't really found a method that I like using for non-metallics with the exception of the parkerization on US weapons. So for this, I'm just going to use the metallic black. And I'm going to be very careful not to get this metallic color on any areas I don't want. If you get metallic colors onto areas you don't want, and you wipe it away, you'll leave like a shiny residue because of the actual metallic flakes in the paint pigment. 
So be very careful not to get this on his uniform. to our, the, the metal parts of our brain gun here and we're just going to use some Vallejo Model Air gun metal. I haven't tinned this in any way as Model Air colors are already pre-tinned so they actually brush immensely well because of this. And I'm just going to pick out certain raised details. I don't want to lose the darker underlay of the metallic black just to, um, I just want to make a little bit of worn steel here and there. So I'm just going to add some washes to the weapon. First, we're going to use some Agra's Archade on the wooden furniture and the sling. And on the metal parts, we're just going to use some Citadel Null Oil. And this is going to like tone everything together and just knock back some of that shininess and make the weapon look like a bit more realistic. And I'm just going to go back with uh, our DAC and flat brown mix and just give a very basic highlight over the wash want to allow it to dry of course. So for the wood details I'm just going to take some of our flat brown and a little bit of Flejo red leather. Just mix a little bit together to make a slightly warm brown colour. And I'm just going to add small amounts of this colour with a fine brush just to add some basic wood grain and also make it look like it's treated or uh, um, varnished to wood. You don't have to go out too much further than that if you do not wish. So we're just going to start working on the boots and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our Vallejo DAC uniform and mix it with our German grey um, just to make it kind of a weird, like a very dark slate grey colour and that's going to be our highlight colour for our boots. And then I'm just going to mix a little bit more of that dark uniform colour to make it a little bit more lighter. And that's what I'm going to put on the heels and on the toes to make it look like worn leather. So back onto our bicycle. So I painted most of this off camera because it was very fiddly and annoying. And I just basically painted the tyres and the saddle in flat black. And I'm just going to add a wash of thin down 502 octile, or should I say octile, or 502 um, shadow brown oil paint here. And I just made my own wash. I'm just going to apply it pretty heavy, I don't, really, I don't really care if it's messy or not. And while that wash is still wet, I'm just going to take a, a Q-tip here or a cotton swab and just wipe away the excess. And it'll just give me a nice kind of weathered effect without it being too heavily battered. And with our bike completed, our model is now ready. I've just glued the bike to our commando just using some white PVA glue, which will leave no residue once it dries. So I really hope you enjoyed this two-part special to mark the anniversary of Operation Overlord. 
and to pay tribute to the troops on the day that risk it all for the benefit of us all really so guys i really hope you liked it i want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you again for subscribing and supporting this channel you're all amazing and a big thank you to my patrons for um helping support the channel and making a lot of these projects possible so thank you so much guys happy modeling and i'll catch you in the next video i have been shane bye bye